Hey, hey. Uh, thank you for voting for me, first of all. Um, appreciate it. So I wrote a book um, exploring the question of, is it OK for founders um, to have side projects? It's kind of a taboo, um, kind of a taboo thing to do. Um, but I did it. And I'm really glad that I did. And I wanted to discover other people who have done it. And then like really dive into why they're doing it and, uh, and see what I can learn from that. So um, I'm just curious, who here has more than one business that they're running right now? And can you keep your hand up if those businesses are doing more than 10K a month? So there's actually more than I thought um, here. That's, that's quite a bit. Um, so everybody's doing it. Why does it have this stigma? Like why would your investors, if you had investors, frown um, upon that? Of course, there are some super high profile examples of this. And I looked at the uh, career trajectories of some of these guys, um, probably all familiar with Jack Dorsey. You may not know that in October 2015, within 10 days of each other, he became the permanent CEO of Twitter after he got kicked out for going to fashion shows and doing yoga or something like that. Um, they really didn't like that he had other interests, um, but they brought him back. And within 10 days of that, he took his side business, Square, public on the New York Stock Exchange. Parallel, entrepreneur, ah, parallel entrepreneurship at the highest level. Um, Marsha Kilgore, another really interesting story. She'd been doing parallel entrepreneurship all along. So when she first started Bliss, she actually had a um, fitness um, business going on at the same time. She was kind of saddened when she had to close that down because Bliss was really taking off. She sold Bliss to Louis Vuitton, who sold it to Starwood. She started another business, um, that's Soap and Glory, sold that to Boots, and then started three other things. Um, so she is now running three businesses at the same time right now. And then of course there's this guy, um, just Mr. Superhuman. Um, one, one interesting fact about Elon Musk, he is not the founder of Tesla. I didn't really know this until I tried to dissect all of this mess that he's working on. Um, he was, you know, after he made a fortune selling um, on, the, on the PayPal sale, he started SpaceX. He got a CTO. He's like co-founders of SpaceX. Um, he found the original founders of Tesla and invested in them. And then they brought him in to be CEO. So again, this works at the highest of high levels, but I still was really curious, why do it? Like, why are these people doing this? And what can I learn from the superhuman parallel entrepreneurs um, that I could maybe take to my own day job? And uh, so I interviewed a whole bunch of people, um, not a whole bunch, like really a couple dozen people who, kind of like you, who raised your hands earlier, um, are running multiple businesses at once. And I asked them, so why are you doing it? Number one reason, you may not be surprised, um, because it's a passion. Like, they're just super interested in it. And I'll go into a couple more ground level examples of people who are pursuing a passion with their side businesses, even though they are already founders of one business. The other one, um, diversification. It's taking the principle of portfolio theory and applying it to your own career as an entrepreneur. It's asking the question if my investors, if you have investors, can diversify their risk and invest in multiple companies at once, why do they expect me as a founder to only have one business? Why do I have to be 100% all in on this thing when they get to diversify? Um, and the parallel entrepreneurs who are doing this um, recognize that as kind of an unfair um, situation. So they're starting other businesses uh, in addition to the one that's maybe paying most of the bills. Um, I also had a hypothesis that these entrepreneurs, because they're running multiple businesses at once, probably have this super broad set of skills. So I asked them, I had like 24 tasks um, I said, which of these can you do yourself? And which of these would you have to outsource? And I was kind of expecting it to be broad. I didn't think that there would be any clustering there. But by far, the two most common skills that they would do themselves and not outsource, or that they could do themselves and not outsource, 
number one was writing. It's like 90, 95% of them would, um, rather than outsource, rather than have someone else on their team do it, they'd write blog posts, they'd write a book, they'd, they'd do all of their content marketing. Um, and then the second one was um, finance. So that would be in either building their own books, analyzing their own books, building their own Excel models. Surprisingly, it was not programming. I expected these parallel entrepreneurs to be um, kind of like most of the people that I'm meeting here, like fairly technical, like people who would be able to develop their own products. Um, in fact, less than half of them would actually develop their own products. Um, I kind of I asked some more questions of them, bundled it into a couple of what I'd say broader personality traits. Um, one thing that I just kind of gleaned out of these conversations, like I, I interviewed them in depth, it's like the, it's this level of discipline that um, kind of struck me uh, as unusual or at a higher level than most of the entrepreneurs who I know. Of course, running multiple businesses, you really have to keep your head straight doing that. Um, you also have to be very uh, efficient at toggling back and forth between multiple businesses, um, kind of like context switching and not have a lot of, call it like transaction cost or friction toggling from one business to the other. And they are able to do that by being very regimented. Um, and then the other thing, because um, you're kind of strapped to resources, you're, you're just like one person or maybe you know, one, one small team doing multiple projects, you really have to be creative about your resources and be able to ask the questions that maybe your competitors are not asking. So that curiosity, I'd sort of also bundle in with like creativity. And it's not like this really hard, super smart, like Asperger-y, high IQ kind of um, thing. Like it's just having a lot of discipline and having a lot of curiosity or creativity. Um, just because I was curious, I actually pulled all of them, like what business structure are you using? It's really great that Patrick is now uh, adding an LLC to Stripe's Atlas because by far LLC was the preferred legal mechanism for their businesses. Um, so I want to leave you with a little bit of parting wisdom from the people who I interviewed. Um, Max Alschiller is the founder of Sales Hacker. It's a website, uh, kind of a media business that does three and a half something million dollars a year. He has a small team, um, spends most of his time deep sea fishing off the coast of Florida. He's a master at outsourcing and like the, the thing that I really took away from his conversation with me was don't be afraid or I guess be aware of what you're not great at. Um, and if you're going to be working on multiple businesses at once, um, be able to outsource your weaknesses. And his next company, his second company, Sutra, is a coffee alternative. It's like this powdery stuff you pour into hot water. It looks a little gross, but he, it actually tastes pretty good. Um, he built it because he can't drink coffee and wanted something else. So this was a passion case. Um, Mr. Pigford is a friendly face around here. I saw him earlier, one of my favorite entrepreneurs. Um, started Bear Metrics, a great business, small team that um, we were a customer of his for a long time in my first business. Um, I saw a tweet from him that all of a sudden he's launching this home goods um, product. And I thought, wow, like here's a software guy doing vases and paperweights in his garage. Like, what's up with that? Um, so I asked him about it and he said effectively that it helps keep him sane and because he is a great manager, he recognizes that, hey, if he's allowed to do side projects, he's actually going to encourage his own team to do side projects as well and in fact mentors his team in their one-on-ones about their side projects, kind of incorporating it into um, like the culture of bare metrics. And I realized I didn't really introduce myself. Um, I'm a recovering venture-backed uh, founder, um, sold scripted, unfortunately, at a loss. But I had a side business going at the time that discovers email addresses, twofer, pays my bills now. Um, and Listio is starting to make money, and I'm actually launching my first customer for Vox Loca um, tomorrow. <laughs> Somehow do that in the, in the hallway. Um, and my word of advice is if you're going to do this, um, again, technical audience here, I'm a self-taught engineer, kind of a, a shitty engineer, but I can build stuff that works. 
um, I'm able to do that because I don't really deviate from my tech stack. So um, it is, of course, appealing to most technologists to chase after the newest JavaScript framework, the newest hosting provider. I'm like Ruby on Rails, Heroku, um, Postgres, just regular old JavaScript all the way. And that's what I do. And I can maintain and I can build without pulling my hair out. And um, that's what I found that works. I have all of this and more in this book, again, that I wrote on uh, Amazon now. It's called The Parallel Entrepreneur. Um, check it out, and thanks for listening. <laughs>